that all this worrying put together has not done one thing to advance our insights unless we learn how to stop worrying. Now, worrying is something that is natural to human beings. Even we find evidences of it in the animal kingdom. But worry is a misuse of energy. And uh, as ma many of the ancient scholars pointed out, everything that is important in life is worthy of deep and careful consideration. But nothing should be handled by fretting and fussing. Everything that comes along as a problem should be solved in the spirit of internal enlightenment. We should always be living the best that we are and the best that we know. And if we do this and come against a complicated problem, then we have inner resources which will help us to find a new solution to a new problem because of the general attitude that we are holding. Little by little, therefore, we correct old faults, build new strengths, and become more useful to ourselves and those around us. So this record is something that is well worth bearing in mind. Another record type of thing was uh, developed in Egypt. And in this particular type of record, uh, the individual who began a study, for instance, a person who intended to become a physician, or intended to become a priest in the temple, or intended to become a builder of palaces or houses. This individual, in his instructional period, studied usually with the masters of his arts or sciences. And when he was ready for his graduation, he was supposed to prepare a paper, a dissertation, the idea of the dissertation has continued to annoy young people now. A dissertation is usually a headache. And a, a doctoral thesis is enough to cause a person to collapse in one way or another because it is meaningless. It tells nothing that is real. But the idea behind it in the first place was really a very good one. This dissertation should be a simple statement on the part of the graduate of how he wanted to use what he had learned for the common benefit of mankind. He was so supposed to explain how he would proceed if he was to build a school, if he was to create a group of people, if he was to perform some public service, that his knowledge was to be dedicated to the help of all living things. And he was going to explain in his case how he actually intended to do this. What his steps would be, one, two, three. How he would proceed after graduation to make the education he had received valuable to others. This habit of preparing these outlines should be revised and revived. It should come down to us that education is an asset which must be dedicated. It must be given to the source of all need for the advancement of the and enrichment of all good in nature. Otherwise, its primary purpose has failed. So here's another problem of how the individual is going to take what he knows and use it. Now, perhaps you may decide that he is going to take what he knows for further research, that he has found a problem that others haven't solved, and to this he will dedicate his life if it is useful and necessary. So he has a, pl a project and a plan which he is expected to fulfill. And if he varies from this plan or fails to uh, fulfill it, he is subject to criticism and condemnation not only by his own teachers but by society in general. Another interesting phase of keeping records you probably have observed in TV programs. Uh, you find an archaeologist out in the field working in a mud hole or, or an old wall or something. But if he has a pick in one hand, he has a pencil and paper in the other. Every single thing he finds out he's writing down, every step of his discoveries, every inch of soil that he has turned is noted. Where and how the artifacts were accumulated is carefully recorded. Or out in the field, someone is studying animal life. They also are watching the animal very uh, carefully, but they have a paper and pad and pencil with them. 
they have watched and studied the habits of these various animals and have recorded them accurately in order that science and uh, ecology in general might be of greater service to the preservation of various forms of life. Now, what we really need most of all sometimes is that pad and pencil to discover the eccentricities of ourselves. We must discover which layer of what we are functioning in and what we have dug out of our own subconscious. And if it is no good, we should analyze it away, understand it, and realize why it is worthless to us. All this careful self-estimation, however, has to avoid one danger, and that is excessive self-centeredness. The individual who is just self-centered and is doing all this simply because he wants to be a more arrogant or successful or is concerned primarily with financial improvement, this is a failure. But if he is honest in the recording of his own attitudes, it will in many instances demonstrate to him why the search for fame or the search for wealth is a delusion. But as long as he believes in it, he will suffer for it. And until he records day by day the incidents leading up to accumulation and later do the uh, scattering or disseminating of that which he has accumulated. Until these facts are clear, he is not in possession of the real essential knowledge he needs. He can be warned and told by every counselor in the country that he should change his ways. But unless there are facts that cannot be denied by his own mind, he will probably continue in his present course. But when these things that happen on his own skin are brought home to him by thoughtfulness, and he realizes again and again what he is doing to himself, then gradually facts can take over. And facts come in as a useful way of pointing out a mistake. And where the mistakes are reduced, the life of the individual is markedly improved. Also, there are areas in which the person should note, for instance, the ability to carry responsibility. Is the individual, by nature, very thoughtful, very careful, very skillful in problems re uh, resulting from or involving accepting responsibilities? The individual should realize his depth and his limitations in this area. He should realize that he must have certain qualities of dedication if he is to be a truly responsible person. If he is careless in these matters, losses result, and the individual does not accept the experience, he keeps right on making trouble and sometimes gets himself into desperately difficult circumstances. Every phase of life must be made reasonable, must be made according to natural reason and natural law. The law of cause and effect is just about immutable. And in the common experiences of living, every generation has gone through the tribulation of setting in motion causes but not being willing to accept the results. If, therefore, the individual through experience recorded in his own life sees the necessity of accepting the responsibility for the actions which he commits, he will then begin to observe those actions which he can live with and those which are too destructive to continue. This is a problem when you're alcoholic. It is a problem with narcotics. It is a problem with uh, various drug addictions. The individual has not willingly or consciously accepted the inevitable evidence of the trouble he is making for himself. He is not saying, is it worth it, and deciding it is not. He goes along from day to day and by gradually weakening his mental resources <coughs> by the abuse of them, he comes finally to be a hopeless addict to something. And this, by this time, he may claim not to be able to change the situation.